Alright guys, time for a little tech tip. So what you're looking at here is the wastegate for the turbo. This particular one is a 50 millimeter Chinese wastegate. You can buy this wastegate right off of eBay. They're like $55. They're about the cheapest wastegate you can get. So a couple things I recommend when you're running one of these cheap wastegates is you need to take it apart and make sure that all the nuts and bolts are tight because if you don't you're gonna have a bad day so basically you need to chuck it up in the vise in between there take all the screws out I've already done that obviously you'll take this off it has springs in it so when you take this off it's gonna spring out take this off and then you can see here is your diaphragm so a couple things you want to check are, are, is the diaphragm seated properly, you know, is it damaged, that sort of thing. Make sure all is good. And then the other thing is these little set screws. There's three of them around the perimeter. And you need to take a little tiny Allen wrench, I believe it's a two millimeter Allen wrench, and you stick it in here and then you're going to loosen the thing. I've actually already done this, but when I took this apart, this was completely loose. I could put no force on here at all and it came loose. So that's gonna cause you issues because if these screws fall out, then your valve is gonna fall out, you know, because this is where the diaphragm attaches to the valve on the bottom. As you can see here, that's the only thing that retains the valve onto the diaphragm. So if one of those falls out, what you may see is, and we have saw this on the Futura, pressure will come in here on the bottom as boost builds, and then it will come through the valve stem down there, and then out through this hole here. So it may seem like it has a damaged diaphragm, but what actually happened was the set screw fell out. So what I recommend is you take these out, you put some Loctite on them, and then you put them back in. Don't go crazy on tight, you know, you'll strip the Allen head out pretty easily if you go crazy. So another thing you want to check is, and I've had issues with this, is these Allen bolts here make sure they are good and tight because I've had it to where they are loose and this whole housing here is sitting crooked and boost basically leaks past these screws and then out the bottom I've had that happen on the stude when I put the dual wastegate set up on it these screws were not tight and the boost leaked out and it made more boost than what I wanted. In this case, it made less boost than desired. In that case, it made more boost than desired. <laughs> so definitely have to be careful. Um, also, you want to check that the diaphragm is in good condition. Make sure there's no tears or any... Uh, a lot of times you'll see it like doubled over when it sits down into the seat here. This part will be like folded down like this and pinched by the top so make sure that you double check that and then once you get past all that you one other thing wear your pipe thread connections on your tops and bottoms I like to deburr this this one's not too bad you can see a very small burr there you don't want that to tear the wastegate diaphragm it won't really do that on the bottom one, so you don't really have to worry about that one as much, but the top definitely need to deburr that. And then the next step is you need to figure out what springs you want to put in it. So I believe the big spring, they rate that at like 3 PSI, and the little spring might be 4 PSI. So combined, they should be 7 PSI. So obviously the only way to know what PSI it's going to make is actually install it on the car and you know get into boost and see where it stops but a lot of times when you are running a restrictive setup like this which we have a 4.2 liter 
with a T3 relatively small turbine housing, what you'll find is it will take more spring than what they say. You know, it, it they'll say this is a 3 PSI, this is a 4 PSI, but it won't make more than 5. So there's back pressure in the exhaust and that's exerting a force on this surface area and that pushes the valve open sooner than what the springs are advertised to do. So a lot of times what you'll have to do is you will have to overspring the wastegate in order to make it work. If you're running a very unrestricted exhaust, you'll find that it'll hit that these numbers a lot better than say a very restrictive setup like what we're doing here. You know, we're going for maximum spool on this car. So we want the turbo to light off instant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, it comes with a third spring, which goes in the center here, and I'm gonna put all three springs into the wastegate. So I have this little leak down tester, um, and I like to actually hook this up to the air compressor and then hook this up to the wastegate and you can pressurize the bottom, see where the valve actually starts to open, and you can really see the wastegate working. You can listen for leaks. You can see if anything's being stupid, and a lot of times I'll do this hooked up to the car, and I'll hook into the teed portion of the manifold, and I'll actually pulse the wastegate controller to see what it does to the crack pressure of where the wastegate starts to crack open and see what my response is there. I don't do that all the time, but every once in a while I'll do that on one of them. Just to give myself a, you know, this this duty cycle should make this amount of boost. All right, so that's gonna wrap up our video here. If you like this type of content where we cover a very specific topic in detail and I talk about our experiences with different types of things, Leave a comment down below saying I'd like to see more of this. All right, make sure you like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.